Okay, let's start. Okay, everybody. So um, today, uh, I just wanted to finish uh, the very quickly the the SAT chapter and the, and then starting uh, the the SMT chapter. Uh, I was planning originally to to finish the SAT chapter on Friday, but I have very few things left, so which we we deal with very quickly. So I just wanted to give you some hints about some. Um, typical applications of SAT, which are planning and the boundary model checking, but there are just some, I go through them quite quickly. Um, planning, uh, uh, okay, so you, in, um, I think it was 94, uh, um, so planning is a standard uh, problem for artificial intelligence, and uh, substantially boils down to, uh, to the following. So, given a set of action operators, uh, and a representation of initial states or more uh, possible initial states and uh, of some goal state or goal states uh, and some bound, so n, uh, n steps, uh, you have to find a sequence of uh, application uh, of, of the operators, or one or two or n, which leads from the initial state to the goal state. Okay, so this is quite uh, obvious and something that you uh, are used to do even, even though you are not an expert in artificial intelligence. Okay, and uh, so in 94, Selman and Kauth had this idea of uh, encoding this problem into, uh, into SAT, so encode them into a Boolean formula, and substantially, more or less, it works as follows. So, in general, you can think of encoding uh, some predicates, okay, so where you have some variable whose range is a finite, who has a finite amount of possible values, so that you can encode, uh, encode them into explicit variables or have a logarithmic encoding. And uh, you have some operators which have preconditions and effects. So for instance, uh, the idea, uh, the typical um, blocks word uh, example is that you can move some blocks from the table passing from uh, uh, some configuration A, where A is on top of B or is on top of C, to some goal where C is on top of B and on top of A, like some children's uh, game uh, when um, some baby's game okay so for instance if you want to represent this very simple move you have one possible move which uh, uh, means moving some block from a source place to a destination place D and for instance you may have some conditions on that so uh, in order to apply this uh, it, might, it must be the B must be a block that uh, B should be clear, so nothing on top of it. That B should be on uh, on S, okay? Wherever S is, whatever S may be, and uh, either D is clear or uh, or D is uh, is a table. So the destination it mu must either be a clear uh, um, block or or the table. And of course, that uh, all all those values or S, B, and D are all different. And the fact is that S is clear, so there's no more, there's no more B on top, and B is no more on S, and uh, now B is on D, and uh, D is no more clear. Okay, so for instance, this is one possible representation intuitively uh, in terms of predicates. So substantially, the idea is that uh, you impose uh, some uh, steps, and uh, typically you may uh, think of, uh, you may put uh, uh, as a convention here, you you use uh, even uh, indexes uh, to represent the states and odd, uh, um, odd uh, indexes to represent actions. This is the convention that uh, uh, Simon and Kaut uh, adopted. So given an st initial state where, uh, which represents this situation where uh, A is on B uh, at step zero, uh, B is on C at step zero, and uh, C is on, is on the table at step zero, okay? and A is clear, has nothing on top of it, then the goal that you want to have is that at the end, uh, C is on top of B, B is on top of A, and uh, uh, A is on top of T. You may also want to add that uh, C is clear, okay? Okay, the typical, uh, the action that you may want to represent, of course, there are many variations of that, is that at step T, 
where t is um, a, a node index, okay, uh, a uh, move a uh, from b to c means that a is clear at step t minus one, uh, and that uh, a is on b on, on step t minus on the so the, the block is on the source at step t minus one, and uh, the, uh, the the target is is clear, and uh, uh, that um, so this is the um, the uh, the prerequisite, okay. And that a step t plus one, the consequences are that b is clear, and that t uh, a is uh, no more on b, and now a is on c, and the c is clear. Okay, so this is a possible effect of actions. Well, that's not enough. Um, in planning, you need also to encode some so-called frame actions. So to describe uh, what happens to the predicate to the predicate which are not directly involved in, in the action? So, well, the, in the sense that if you move something uh, which uh, in, changes the truth value of some predicates, you have to also explain that at the next step, all the other all the other predicates are maintain maintain the same values. This is called the frame frame action. So it's frame information. Okay. And for instance, one way to say that is that for every move, you say what is maintained, maintained, right? So if you move A, B to true to, to the table, A from B to the table, and C was clear, then uh, a step minus one, then C remains clear, step plus one. So you have to, um, if it was not clear, you have to add explicit that is no more clear. Otherwise, uh, the, you, you don't maintain this information. So you have to explain that everything which is not changed by directly by an action maintains its value at the next step. So the, the snapshot is maintained. So the, the situation, the status is maintained uh, from, from everything which is not directly touched by actions. Well, you should also impose that uh, at least one action uh, is, um, is acted, right? So. Uh, substantially, uh, you may impose that uh, for all the possible combination of BS, the at least the one action or move action is performed. Also, there is another variation of uh, another way to um, encode the classic uh, frame actions, which is so-called explanatory. So, instead of saying that all the elements, um, as a for every action, list uh, all the um, at least the fact that all the predicates which are not involved are maintained the same, are kept the truth value, you could simply list on the fact that uh, <coughs> every, you should also add the, the action saying that whenever you change something, so whenever something is changed, so if not clear C and clear, so if now uh, C is no more clear, and, uh, uh, and C used to be clear before, then something has to be happened. So you list the actions that you can, can have work, uh, which can be the, the possible sources of this, this change. So at least either A, uh, A has moved to B to C or A has moved to T to C and uh, either B has moved to A to C or um, B has moved to T to C. So there is a C here missing, okay. Okay, so uh, also there are, depending also some strategies. So typically when the original encoding was uh, that uh, uh, at least one, at most one action at the time it can be performed, right? So you, uh, uh, you make one move at every step. But this turned out to be very, very inefficient, right? Because uh, uh, you had to enroll all the, um, you had to add uh, uh, n variables for every step and, and the typical, so you had to, uh, to involve many steps. One idea is to parallelize some actions. So you can, in principle, parallelize, you can parallelize you can have uh, two moves in parallel, oh, I forgot to say. So this means that for all possible combination actions, only one of, of these two actions could be, uh, could be performed. 
And this uh, is done by adding mutual exclusion actions uh, in, the, in this form. However, you can weaken this constraint saying that the only actions uh, which cannot be uh, performed uh, in, uh, in the same section are those uh, such that uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the effects of, of a condition of an action alpha contradicts uh, the precondition beta. Okay, so you can add uh, the same very same action, but only for those actions uh, such that uh, the uh, contradict the uh, the um, the effects of one contradicts the effect of two. For instance, if you move uh, B from T to uh, to A, uh, then you cannot move uh, A from uh, B to C because T now has B on top of it. Okay. Okay, just to say that the way there are many ways of, by which you can encode uh, uh, the uh, by which you can encode the the, uh, the variables. So one very one simple naive idea is to encode all the possible ground predicates as boolean variables. So for instance, if you have move uh, at step one uh, block B from table to A, you have one explicit Boolean variable for all, for all this. So this means that the, the number of Boolean variables at every steps is given by the number of uh, steps uh, times the number of argument or possible argument of the first uh, um, field times the number of uh, the possible arguments of the second field plus the times of argument of uh, the third field. Okay, this is quite big uh, possibility. So this causes you to use a huge number of um, variables. A much smarter way is uh, that you can encode, uh, rather than uh, introduce one variable for every possible argument, you can encode the argument as a, uh, with a logarithmic encoding. So if you have eight possible candidates, you use the three Boolean variables, in order to encode uh, all possible uh, eight combinations. So you use three variables rather than eight. And this means that here you will use three times three times three rather than eight times eight times eight. Okay, which is much, much more compact. Okay, so this was just to give you a flavor of what you what you can do in planning. Of course, this is very basic and uh, much more sophisticated encodings are available. So if you need any reference to the literature, I'm, I'm very happy to give it. The, the role of these two examples here just to give you the, the flavor of what's going on, right? So if you are interested, I can point you to, to some reference. Okay, so another typical application. So again, those who have attended my former methods course will, uh, may, will already know everything, but uh, just to mention, so one typical uh, and very important application of SAT uh, was um, is uh, boundary model checking, so verification of a system. So typically you express a system uh, as a, um, a Kripke model, so to say, which is represented by a set of initial states and the transition relation, both of which are represented of, um, as a, a Boolean formula. So if you think about that, uh, if uh, you can express, so suppose, well, we are speaking of finest machines, right? So every state can be represented as a tuple of Boolean atoms. Well, the bits, substantial, the bit needed to represent the states, okay? And uh, so the initial states can be represented by a Boolean formula, which describe all and only the possible um, initial states, so such that its models are all the model, all the atoms, are uh, all the so the truth assignments are all and only the uh, the states which uh, define the notion of initial state, and then a transition relation. Um, in order to encode a transition relation, you can use a Boolean formula on two n variables, where n is the number of Boolean variables needed to represent the state, representing terms of the current state and next state. Okay, so you have 
So you uh, can uh, represent everything as a Boolean formula, which describes the possible uh, uh, pairs of states which are a value represent a value transition in a traditional relation. Okay, and then you can encode the property like an LTL formula. I, well, I just give you a hint what an LTL formula is for whoever is not in. Uh, whoever has no notion of formal verification or of uh, temporal logics. Substantially, uh, LTL, linear temporal logic, is a logic in, in which uh, a Boolean, with the Boolean, user Boolean connectors, and uh, some temporal operators like uh, uh, next, forever, this is global, globally, F, eventually, until, and early releases, which is the dual of until. Okay, now suppose you, given that, you want to represent the fact whether a system verifies some property. So a typical example you make is you, want, you are designing a system to control a, a cross, um, a rail cross, uh, and uh, uh, you want to be sure that no matter what, no possible evolution of, this, of the systems, the system behave in such a way that is never the case that the bar is up when the train is incoming, right? This is this mean, this can be encoded as G uh, bar up. So a train incoming implies uh, bar not up. Okay. Okay. This is uh, this is the uh, typical case. Then what you do is you impose an integer k, which is a bound, so the number of steps of, uh, of the evolution, and then you can encode the proper, the, the encode the following property. Is there an execution of path, the path of our machine, our system, which satisfies the temporal property f? Typically here, the temporal property is the opposite of what you want to prove. So is there an execution? Is there an execution which leads to a state where the bar is up, where the train is incoming? Okay, this is a bad state, something that you don't want. Okay, but so you want to try to see to to be able to simulate to find some bug, some buggy behavior. Okay, well, I I want you to to tell the hint of that. Uh, so what you actually do, you unroll the transition rule. So if you have a k steps, what you do is you define uh, two times, uh, so n times k plus one variables. So one for every step. So you have k plus one steps. And for every step, uh, you define an array of n Boolean variables. So that you can represent the state as step zero, state as step one, state as step two, and so on and so forth. And then uh, your formula is given by two components. One represents the machine, which I have labeled with MK, and this is substantially is the, the conjunction of the initial, the, the formula defining the initial states applied to state S0. This, this says state S0 must be initial state. And then for I going to 0 to K minus 1, you unroll at the transition relation. So this means state S0 and state S1 must be must verify transition relation. So, so S1 must be a successor of S0. And transition of S1 to S2. Uh, S1, S2 must verify the transition relation. So this means that S2 must be a successor to the transition of state S1, and so on and so forth until SK. Substantially, this means that the state, the truth values of state S0, S1, S2, S3, blah, blah, are such that they represent one possible valid execution of the machine. Okay, and this quite complicated formula here, I, I'm not going to, to explain uh, what is going on. If you're interested, uh, I can, I'm happy to explain this in formal methods course, but substantially represent an encoding together with the definition, the recursive definition of these two expressions here, represent the encoding of uh, a given LTL formula uh, in terms uh, of a path of length k, either with uh, a loop or without it. 
Okay, I'm definitely not going to the details. Whoever has taken my course on the formal methods know that. So why is this interesting? Because you can run a sub solver on that. I give you just one example. This is very, very important subcase, which is reachability. So, uh, which is remember is the negation of the property that you want to verify. So FP, so is sooner or later you bump into P, is typically the negation of a, a safety property in the sense it's never the case that. So here P is typically a bad situation that you want to avoid and you want to see whether you are able to, to find a buggy, a buggy execution. So what you do is you say, okay, initially I is S0 and uh, then uh, the SIS, they are the valid execution of the machine. And then in one of the states from he, zero to K, pi, pi J holds. So this means either or at least one of those states from, from step zero to step K is a bad state. Okay, so this, if, uh, if the sub so you, you do this encoding and you run a sub solver over it, then when you run, if this returns sat, well, you're in trouble because uh, uh, the, the model, the, the sat solver returns is an, once partitioned in, in the steps, it represents a sequence of states which start from initial state and lead to a buggy situation. Okay, here there are, you can encode also G and, and other more complicated properties. Okay, so here just to say, that uh, with the SAT you can do a lot of things. And in particular, one Bada Modacecki was one of the leading uh, uh, problem which uh, allowed, uh, um, so say, stimulated a lot of research in, uh, in uh, pushing heavily, uh, in improving uh, SAT uh, performances. Okay, so long uh, for uh, for SAT. Uh, I just uh, here is a quite uh, non-exclusive, uh, but quite long, but though non-exclusive uh, list uh, of um, uh, of references. There are much more than this, and uh, so if you need, if you are interested in a particular topic, I can provide you some references. Just one uh, uh, disclaimer. Well, first of all, the list of references, of course, is not intended to be over uh, inclusive. Uh, so there are some papers there. So some of them are mine, uh, which you can get there. And there are something which you may uh, be uh, interested in. So the, the combination methods and automatic reasoning, okay, this, this is something that will be more interested in, um, in, um, in SMT. There is a SAT association. Uh, SAT Live is an update link on SAT, and there is the SAT Lib uh, satisfiability library, which is uh, the, uh, with many many problems in uh, in uh, SAT. Okay, so to me this would conclude uh, this uh, uh, the part on SAT. Okay. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, to start this uh, uh, speaking of SMT. If uh, anybody, is there anybody who has any extra question? Okay, so let's go for SMT, which is the second group of slides. Can anybody, can anybody read it correctly? Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me first give some, um, this class I will give some more, um, very introductory and uh, give some, uh, start with uh, some motivations and goals and give you some high level overview of, uh, of SMT. So what is technically speaking SMT? Uh, is the problem of deciding the satisfiability of a formula, well, typically quantifier free formula in some uh, decidable first order theory. So we are speaking of logic, we are speaking of first order logic, um, and uh, uh, we have some background theories. I will explain in the next slide what I mean, as, for example. And uh, I have the problem of deciding the satisfiability of uh, formulas 
under some implicit, some, some, some semantics given by an underlying theory. Notice that the theory can also be not only a basic theory, but also a combination of theories. We'll see also in the, in the next slides. So what are some interesting examples of theories? Well, the simplest theories that we can think uh, is the theory of equality, where we have uh, uh, the equality predicate with the, all the standard properties of equality, the mathematical property of equalities. And uh, we have uh, some function symbols. Well, here are just unary functions, but you can have uh, arbitrary unary functions. And the only assumption, and we make no assumptions about uh, the uh, the, the functions, right? So substantially, the only assumption we make is that uh, they are functions. So this means that if uh, the two, the arguments uh, are identical, then the outcome of the function is identical, right? Like, uh, so uh, uh, f of x, if x equals y, then f of x uh, equals f of y, right? This is the standard assumption, the standard property of the function, right? So for instance, uh, yeah, okay, so, uh, for instance, you can, uh, in this is called the UF, equality and interpretive function, and also this all sorts of predicates, okay? You can think, for instance, if x equal y, and y is f of the, equal f of z, then you can imply that g of x equal g of f of z, right? Because from this, we can infer that x is equals f of z, so the two, G applied to identical arguments give you identical value. Okay. Other logic. Well, typically, one important, uh, two important subcases are arithmetic, are different logic and, and the uh, UTVPI, I'm never able to uh, pronounce it, you need to variable per, uh, per, uh, equality, per inequality. Um, so here you have uh, symbols of equality, and you have arithmetical symbols. So you have minus, uh, plus, you have minuses here, and you have a smaller equal here. And everything here is uh, uh, you can have expressions like equalities or x minus in the form of variable minus variables greater or equal than a number. This is called difference logic. Uh, notice that. Well, also this one is a shortcut for x minus y is more equal than zero and x minus y, sorry, and y minus x is more equal than zero, okay? So this is, we admit the qualities because uh, they can be, this is just a syntactical sugar from two inequalities, the end of two inequalities, okay? Uh, so this is, although this is very simple theory, this is very useful to represent a large variety of problems like uh, scheduling, uh, real-time verification, real-time systems, and, uh, and others. UTVPI is a simple variation of that, uh, which, uh, um, uh, which uh, we can uh, just, uh, uh, but we also have uh, a pluses, uh, 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 not only have minuses, but also pluses. More generally, you have a linear arithmetic. Well, you know what linear in terms of arithmetic means. Uh, uh, linear is, linear expression is something, linear term is, is a weighted sum of variables, okay? So uh, 3.4 times t minus 3.4 times 0 plus t by so forth. So you have a, a a weighted sum and then apply to some operator. Operator with a constant. Operator are usually equal uh, difference, uh, small, less, more equal, greater, greater, equal. And uh, okay. Com plus possibly Boolean atoms there. Okay. So this you have that uh, tie, a Boolean atom implies uh, this expression and uh, the ne its negation implies instead this expression. Okay. So this says uh, if the delta is true, then S1 is S0 plus 3.4 times T minus 3.4 times T0. And if instead uh, T uh, delta is false, then S1 is identical to S0. 
this is for instance um, a possible evolution of for instance from some simple hybrid system okay similarly we can have the same but constraining variables to be uh, on integers so okay so for instance you can have x uh, equals xl plus 2 to the 16 xh uh, and x is greater than 0 and uh, x is more or equal than 2 to the 16 minus 1 and things like that so linear expressions um, over the integers then uh, we have uh, for this another relevant is the theory of array here we have two special uh, functions which are read and write and they mimic the act of uh, assessing uh, of reading uh, from an array an element from a, reading some value from an array in a given index and writing some value in an array at a given index okay in particular uh, the right the right uh, uh, function says write uh, uh, into our write the value write a i e means write uh, uh, the value e uh, in array a at the index i this is equivalent to say a uh, square bracket i assignment e okay read uh, read takes uh, uh, an array as input and an index and returns a value okay so read uh, uh, a j returns the value of uh, a square bracket j like you are used to in uh, uh, in standard uh, programming languages right notice that here um that here um what is this step here you say writing uh taking the array which is the result of writing uh, uh, element e in, uh, in array a at position i so if i consider this array the result of this and i read and i read the element uh, the element of such array in position j okay okay this says that either i equal j or the result of reading uh, uh, from position i is uh, is the same of read a of j so this says that if i is different from j then reading reading an element in array in an array which is the result of taking a and writing the, uh, something in uh, position i is the same as reading uh, in position j before writing so substantially if you write something in position i and uh, j is different from i the value of j in the array is not is not changed okay do you see this the theory of array is something which is used to uh, uh which is used to um, represent uh, to represent access uh, sequence of accesses both in reading and, and writing accesses to uh to some arrays or memory then there's the theory of big vectors also another very very important one big vector uh, represents the idea of big vector is that represent as terms words so sequence of bits so like words in a cpu right and uh, you have the typical operation that your cpu may do on words right so concatenating for instance so this is for its extracting so this takes uh, the word uh, of 16 bits uh, uh, x from takes uh, the uh, takes the variable x and selects uh, the word uh, or the the word of the more, least significant least significant uh, six, 16 bits okay takes x and you select uh, the lowest part similarly this takes y this means take y and uh, uh, take y and takes the the greatest uh, uh, the most significant eight bit so from 15 to to eight and uh, take z and take the uh, least significant seven bit okay 
from uh, 7 to 16. Okay, so this is all 8 bit, this is 8 bit, and this operation is a concatenating. So you take the, the concatenation of these two 8 bit words, okay, and then you can assign. Uh, uh, you can assign x uh, um, uh, these to this uh, 16 bit, this 16 bit uh, variable. Also, you can have, uh, uh, ah, I forgot, uh, also you can have uh, uh, other operation like shifting, shifting, for instance, by, uh, by four bits and others. So this represents the sequence of operation that you can do on, on a CPU. Also, you can have a nonlinear arithmetic, okay, for instance. So this, uh, you have nonlinear expression like products between variables here, right? And many others. So, okay, so the, so what, what is the intuition here? Is that you have a first order logic, but the predicate, the predicates and the, the, the functions in those expressions may have a, uh, and adopt interpretation in uh, and uh, in uh, the theory and obey some um, some rules. So you can only give some fixed interpretations of that, and which obey some rules, which can either be described by axioms or other forms. Okay. So just to give you an example, I mentioned that you can have uh, also combined theories. So theories can be combined. For instance, here is a simple formula. Uh, on a, a combination of theories, on linear integer arithmetic, on equality and non-temporary functions, and uh, uh, on of arrays. So suppose, and this, for instance, can be the encoding of some uh, little piece of software. So consider this very simple formula, which says d greater or equal than zero, and d still is smaller than one. And f of d equals f of a, implies that read, write, v, i, x, i plus d equals x plus one. Well, this may sound quite uh, strange to read, but the, here are standard uh, expression in uh, integer arithmetic, right? Remember, here are, we are on the integers here. d is an, must be an integer f of d equals f of zero, well, this is an equality and interpretive function symbol. And this is something that typically you may use when you are abstracting some function code. You want to check whether you see whether you are able to verify some property without knowing what f does, but just knowing uh, that f is uh, um, a function. Then, of course, you can add uh, some extra actions to describe the, what f does, right? And uh, here you say that uh, the result of writing uh, on, um, so if you read in an array, which is the result of writing uh, uh, onto array B, X in the position Y, and if I read on the on position I plus D, I get uh, X plus one. Okay, the combination or the reasoning on, on a combined theory can be seen as a combination of the reasoning steps in the different theories, which means arithmetical arrays and interpretive function symbol. So can anybody of you, well, okay, uh, unfortunately you read on, uh, on, on the background right here, see if uh, this is consistent. Okay, can you just take a look and uh, see if you are able, without reading in, uh, in the transparency, if you are able to see whether this is consistent or not, this formula. I'm not sure I got the FD equal to F zero meaning. Okay, the only thing that you know about f is that it's a function. That is, if uh, you only, the only thing that you can know of fd equals f0 is that if d is zero, then fd equals f0. Okay. 
I guess the inconsistency is given by the fact that can you the basic raise the volume, please. I can. Ah. Okay, sorry. I just have to reset everything on this PC. So. No, no. And anyway, can you hear me now? Yes. Who are you? Sorry. Okay. Uh, Marco Girardi. Marco. Okay, Marco. Okay. Okay. I guess the inconsistency comes from the fact that basically the first line in uh, linear integral arithmetic uh, forces d to be zero. Yes. So basically, then I, I'm stating that uh, x, uh, because of course I'm reading actually just x uh, in, the first, in the read step, uh, and then the, that line says that x equal x, to x plus one, which is false. Yes, indeed. That's it. Indeed, that is. Okay, let me just explain this step by step here. Okay, what you do to do here? Okay, so from those two lines, since we are on the integers, for these two, sorry, uh, atoms, since we are on the integers, this, implicit, this means we can uh, infer that uh, D is zero, okay? Because we are on the integers. So if D, D is greater than, than zero, but it's strictly smaller than one, it can only be zero because we are on the integers, okay? Right? So D equals zero. But now, by UF reasoning, so this is something that you can infer by reasoning on linear integer of these two atoms. But then, once we know that D equals zero, then by UF reasoning, we can state that FD equals F of zero, right? Because our, a function is applied to identical values, so returns identical values, right? So this means that, but if this antecedence is true, by implication, it means that these atoms must be true. Okay? It's just Boolean reasoning. So this atom should be true. Okay, let's see what does this atom mean. Okay, but D is zero here, right? Okay, so D is zero. So this is, can be rewritten uh, by linear integer integer like read write V I X I equals X plus one. Okay, but notice that this is from this atom, by linear integer arithmetic, we should infer, so since that this uh, expression here cannot be equal to x, if something equal x plus one, by linear arithmetic, you say that this something cannot be equal to x, right? Okay, but look here. This is in contradiction with the theory of arrays, okay? Because theory of arrays clearly stay, says, okay, I didn't so show you all the details of theory of arrays, but I think it's quite intuitive to say that as one of the features of reading and writing is saying that if I take an array and write one element in position i, then if I read back the contact on position i, I obtain the same value that I, I wrote there, right? So if I write a value in a, in a position in an array, and the next step I read this value, I, I read exactly the value which I, I write there, right? Okay? Which means that the, apart from the negation here, is this, is, this must be always valid. But now I have a negation here, right? So this, is, this uh, expression here contradicts a very basic fact about arrays, for which using a combination of uh, Boolean reasoning and reasoning on single, um, on single theory separately, by deducing uh, substantially equalities, let me say, in which I can realize that this combination of theory, or this strong, Combined expression is um, is uh, uh, false. Cannot is unsatisfiable. Okay. Are we there? Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. There are 
plenty many application of SM SMT is incredibly popular um, technology. Well, first of all, let me tell you that SMT is not a problem, it's not technology, but it's a family of problems and the family of technology. Why? Because they may strongly differ from uh, the kind of theory that we are addressing. So for instance, the kind of solution that you adopt in inequality and interpretive functions is very different from that of the vector or very different from those of uh, nonlinear information. There are many other theories, floating point, the strings, uh, blah, 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 many others. But. Okay, so what are the main applications? Well, substantially SMT was mainly embedded in the domain of formal verification and uh, substantially for the verification. It started from the verification of hybrid defining systems, but also big vectors was in thought as a, a verification of uh, circuit designs, microcode software verification, planning from AI, uh, temporary reasoning, scheduler, scheduling, optimization of compilers. There are plenty, many security. There are really a large amount of problems that are uh, currently encoded into and solved via SMT. Whatever SMT means here, because you see that SMT in a given theory can be a very different problem from SMT in another theory. Okay, so just, uh, I, I just, uh, uh, I think that we can have a 10 minutes break now and uh, we can uh, uh, restart in 10 minutes, okay? Okay. And I'll restart the recording. Okay, so uh, in uh, just to give you a very quick uh, list of uh, possible uh, SMT application fields, trying to to give the flavor of um, of them. One of the triggering uh, re, uh, problems, which so you can think to SMT as uh, where uh, SAT and automatic reasoning communities met. Uh, uh, with the money and the problems uh, from formal verification, at least initially. Um, so, substantially, um, one of the first uh, topic which uh, uh, triggered and stimulated a lot of the development of SMT was uh, verification of the real-time systems. Um, some of you who have attended my course on um, forum maths may know. So, substantially, uh, what you have in time system is that uh, not only you have a system with the discrete evolution of discrete variables, but this is uh, also all the, those evolution evolve in real time, and you have time constraints. So you have some variables which are called clocks, which measure the time elapsed from a given moment in which you reset, and uh, and uh, and the current state. So this means substantially that time can elapse during uh, when you are in a state, and uh, some actions can or cannot be triggered by some constraints over time. So for instance, this system here, you may have a clock X and you stay can stay in this location only. So this clock is reset when you enter the state here. So X equals zero here. And then time can lapse here in between here. Just let me just recall uh, to, to have a brief summary what the time automaton is. Um, and then uh, you can uh, stay in this state uh, only no longer than two seconds, okay? Because you reset the value here and X, you can stay here only until X is more equal than two. And uh, in between the one and two, you can uh, shoot this transition and you can pass from uh, uh, step L1 to step L2, uh, location L2. So, Okay, so you have uh, the, all this evolution of a system, which is uh, whose time is measured explicitly by a, a continuous variable, typically a rational one called the clock. And uh, depending, uh, those clocks can be reset while entering uh, some uh, discrete status. And 
the evolution is constrained by invariance, so you cannot stay in this state more than some this amount, or and also some transition is uh, triggered, can be allowed only under constraints of this variable. All constraints are in the form clock operator constant, where operator are the usual, smaller, small, equal, greater, greater, equal, or, or, or equal as a short as a um, syntactic sugar for the combination of greater equal and, uh, and smaller equal. Okay, so what happens is that substantially uh, you can encode uh, one one of the interesting application which was triggering uh, the very first ideas about SMT was uh, verification time systems, and the idea is that uh, uh, you can uh, encode the real time system, particularly a bit real time system on uh, SMT with the uh, um, difference logic. So exactly this one. Or more, okay, so substantially what you can uh, say is uh, time are constraints like uh, uh, current time uh, minus the value x had uh, at step three, the current time uh, minus the value uh, x had uh, at when you reset it, when you enter the step, okay, so these times t minus x can represent the different. So if x represent x3 represent the time, uh, the absolute time at which uh, x was reset, the difference of the current time with that time is actually the time elapsed since there. Okay, so so this constraint here can be represented as t3 at step three can be represented by t3 minus x3 is more equal than two. Okay, or some equalities you can step okay at next step the, this clock is maintained if this this is just reset, or at the step x4 uh, x is reset to zero whatever. Uh, sometimes you need also constraints in this form to represent uh, some condition which are not simply um, invariant checking. So you may need the full of the linear linearity. However, this was the application we triggered in 2002, uh, triggered uh, the development of SMT. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, the first SMT were proposed for, were for linear arithmetic. Um, Okay, uh, this can also be generalized to the verification of hybrid systems. Well, hybrid systems are uh, systems where uh, you also have some variables representing uh, continuous variables, sorry, representing some physical uh, or economic or, or whatever entity which evolves through time say uh, space, uh, distance, uh, speed, uh, uh, pressure, heat, uh, 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 angles, uh, uh, angular velocity, whatever you may need that, or concentration of some chemical substance in within uh, another, whatever you want, whatever is measurable, right? And uh, all those things which evolve through time. Well, in general, those, uh, uh, those problems are extremely complicated and uh, even very easily undecidable. Okay, so with, even with very, even in simple case, uh, uh, deciding a uh, property of a um, hybrid system becomes, uh, um, becomes uh, um, undecidable. But there are some strict, you can typically over approximate uh, those problems with the piecewise linear behaviors. So you can upper a lower bound uh, the, the possible behavior of a uh, continuous behavior of some uh, physical device like really oscillations or uh, decay or whatever you may think with the piecewise linear steps. And if you do that, then this can be encoded into problems in linear real arithmetic, like in the theory of linear arithmetic. 
So as they are typically an evolution of bounded model checking techniques. So you have again discrete information, which is represented by Boolean variables and timed information as you as uh, in the previous case. And then you can have the evolution of physical variables. Uh, for instance, uh, the speed pressure with linear or non-linear constraints. So linear constraints like uh, omega uh, step two is twice uh, the omega step three or even non-linear constraints having multiplication or sin or cosine on, um, uh, actually on R here, not on Q. Um, so again, so some, some of them can be used and solved with uh, linear or non-real uh, arithmetic, linear arithmetic or non-linear arithmetic. Uh, Okay, here is, well, here is another major application uh, of SMT, which is very important to understand. Um, I don't know how much of you, uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, the problem of uh, hardware, so or circuit designs, okay? Um, in general, there are two levels of, uh, well, there are main levels uh, of representation of the circuit, but there are two main ones. One is at gate level, in which every single gate is represented, the end or not, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so every, the basic element is a wire, so a value, single value, single bits, one, zero, okay? And uh, this is, uh, uh, and this can be easily encoded into, into SAT. Well, think about that. Substantial digital circuits is a big Boolean formula, okay? Or you can do something more abstract. This is called uh, um, uh, register transfer level, RTL. And uh, the intuition, so here RTL, so register transfer level. Or when you write, my, so typically when you design a circuit, uh, you design at RTL and uh, you, you use uh, some representation like a VHDL or Verilog uh, uh, to represent the steps. And the basic elements at this, at this level are not single bits, but words. Okay, so, mm, are, which are implicitly arrays of bits. So 16, uh, 32, 64 bits arrays. Okay. And you treat this block singularly. Okay, so if at RTL level, you may have uh, something which you have, uh, one word uh, which you see, which is uh, uh, a reset either with zero if a clock enters, and then uh, you can be shifted uh, uh, by some steps uh, here. Uh, and uh, again, you have a multiplexer which takes an B. You can add if when uh, you, you push, it can be admitted in. And then you can have another which takes an input, uh, makes the sum, uh, and then given the clock again can be shifted again to another other, uh, having a shift uh, or have a multiplier and uh, take some block, uh, take the most significant bit as input to something else, take the most least significant as input to something else, and, and so on and so forth. Plenty many of operations that you can do, right? So the idea is that to represent. Um, so typically, uh, the idea is, and, and also you have a microcode, a microcode, which I, in Italian, uh, which is the kind of software that you use uh, to uh, instruct uh, CPU or pieces of hardware at the bit level. Okay, microcode is something which you have inside a CPU, which actually drives a CPU after compilation. Okay. So these two blocks uh, reason on single words. And what happens when you do that? Well, typically you have a, a bunch of, op of operations that, so take it, add these two words, take, uh, uh, concat these two words, take the N most significant bit or, or the uh, N uh, um, least significant bit and copy this into another word, uh, shift it combine, apply bitwise operations. Um, if you, have, you are familiar with the C or C++ and the bitwise operations that you can do on top of them, uh, so that's actually what I'm speaking about, okay? 
So the idea is that typically, uh, the idea is to have some theory by which you can represent what you can represent those circuits without expanding that bit a bit or postponing at the most as possible the, this act. So you want to apply reasoning at the world level, not a bit level, right? So think, for instance, inequality. Think inequality. So if you say world one is assigned to world two, okay? In, uh, if you reason at world, this is simply inequality. World one equal world two. But if you expand this as big level, this is uh, the end of 16, so only 64 uh, equivalences. Okay? The, for every bit, uh, you say that uh, the word A, the ith bit uh, of word uh, 2 is uh, a logical equivalent to, to the ith bit of word 1. If this is for 64, 64 bits. So the big end of 64 uh, um, double implications, right? So typically, the theory of big vectors is what uh, is a theory by which you want to represent at the world level all those operations. And the intuition here is that you use uh, the counterparts, so the single bits which trigger trigger the uh, debilitation of some gates are represented as Boolean atoms. And uh, the world operations, so all the uh, operations like concatenation, uh, uh, splitting of words, uh, arithmetical operations, uh, um, uh, bitwise operation, blah, 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 are represented at uh, term level. So a word is a term, and then and, uh, all those operations, pluses, minus, concat, uh, uh, split, blah, 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 are uh, functions, okay? Greater or equal, smaller or equal are predicates, okay? And not to mention the modulo two to the n, uh, arithmetic that you are performing there, okay? So substantially, the, the idea is of b vector is being able to, to reason directly higher level. And this, when uh, this succeeds, this is very efficient because uh, if you think about that, uh, this uh, dramatically reduces the search space, in particular when you have to deal with arithmetical operations. So if you, so for instance, you can uh, add uh, the concatenation of the two, if you want to represent the, the concatenation of two words, you can represent that arithmetic a modulo two to the M, two to the M arithmetic, okay? So you have the, that uh, the lower, the number corresponding, if you represent a, a, um, a word as a number, as an integer, Right, like this, the usual bitwise uh, encoding. So you may think that uh, 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 concatenated to uh, a low 16-bit word with a uh, upper 16-word um, bit corresponds to produce a number or a 32-bit, a 32-bit uh, word, which is given by the low plus AH times 2 to the 16. Right, so you can introduce some arithmetical operations. Notice that these very simple operations, the very very simple arithmetical operation that you can encode into into SMT, substitute 64 uh, by implication bit by implications. 64. Okay. So, and also you can have a combination. So you can also use access to memory, encode access to memory by the store and retrieve, which are store and retrieve are the same that read write. It's just different terminology because this used to hardware community. So, so to say that uh, in, uh, let me say in the, the late 2000s, so from 2000, um, Four to uh, the idea was introduced to use SMT rather than SAT as backend engine to reason on uh, on digital circuits design, and this turned out to be quite successful. Do you have any questions so far? Uh, I'm just giving you an overview. I mean, this is just uh, why this is important. Okay.
also one probably the most the mark the the most uh, the market killer application of SVT probably those which uh, that which cause uh, the biggest findings and the biggest interest in SVT is software verification. Well, think uh, about uh, uh, verifying a software. Okay. Well, you can do. So even if you take a very simple C code, like the one on the left, right? So you have uh, a loop uh, while I is more than beam, uh, you, uh, you add to some variable the value of ID. So this is the, the uh, sum of the first uh, beam elements uh, of an array, okay? Well, think about that. You can encode in those different steps by, you, by variables, each time adding a new index to a variable. So initial i0 is zero, step zero. So if this is step zero, initially i0 is zero and the accumulator is zero. So this is an integer, this is a, a real variable. And then uh, you can unroll like you do with bundle model checking, right? For n steps, one, two, three, four, five. So for instance, you can check. So if you know, you know at the given time what beam is. So you can say at every step, if uh, uh, I zero is smaller than uh, dim, dim is a constant, then you can say the ACK. Okay, so if you are smaller than dim, so you, you can enter this loop and say that the accumulator step one equals the accumulator step zero plus the result of reading the B in the index I zero. And uh, the indexes, the new value of index step one is the new value of step zero of I plus one. If this is not the case, so if you don't enter the the, if you don't enter the loop, so if a zero is more, is not uh, smaller than dim, then the accumulator is the same, remains as the same value, and I maintains the same value, and so on and so forth. And you can roll up to a fixed number of steps. So you can also then here can cause some predicate asserting some uh, property. Okay, and you use an SMT solver to solve to check whether this property is satisfied or not, okay? So this is done, probably this is the measure, um, the most important, at least from the financial viewpoint, uh, application of SMT, and uh, Microsoft uh, has invested tons of money on that. In fact, the, one of the leading uh, SMT solver is developed at Microsoft Research and used in, uh, tens of uh, verification systems in uh, used uh, by, by Microsoft, but also substantially every major software company is used as safety based verification nowadays. Um, other applications, uh, planning, if you think of planning, uh, so I've mentioned the planning uh, uh, before, right? So having actions which involves uh, some, uh, make you pass from a given state from to another state and that, uh, to find a sequence of action which uh, leads you from a, an initial starting state uh, uh, to some goal state, right? So this is planning. But now you, you may do planning with the resources. Planning with the resources, so, not, so you can add the constraints or information telling you uh, not only the possible actions, describing the action, but also describe associating to some action to some uh, uh, resource constraint. Like you, have, you may have some resources like the load, the, the load of, of a van, for instance, the amount of fuel that the van can take, um, the cost of gasoline, the, the work, uh, the, the number of hours a driver can, uh, can work and so on and so forth. So you may have, you may want to add some uh, co arithmetical constraints to associate it to every action or to every constraint. So you can say, well, the good tree, the all loaded means that the load is 45 kilos and the maximum load is, uh, can be smaller or equal than 30. So this is, uh, so you cannot have uh, these constraints unless you split it, the, the load into two or whatever. 
So you may find a plan which is not only co uh, is compliant to the Boolean, so the discrete constraints, but also to some numerical constraints that you, you may want to, to deal with, okay? So this is uh, planning with the sources and, and there are many variations of that. Also, other application can be, well, you may want to constrain the number amount of time taken to a plan. Right, so you want to plan uh, given you measure every action, every uh, measure the amount of time, and you want to find uh, uh, a solution plan which is takes you less than uh, total amount of hours. So amount of resources it can be time as well. Also, there are some uh, temporal reasoning, so which is substantially a boolean combination of uh, interval constraints. It is typically done by scheduling so you know when you have a machine which we know it takes a, a given amount of time to do some process and you want to decide which is the right uh, execution of a multi-threaded uh, uh, process uh, in order to for instance minimize the total amount of time or maximize the reward or whatever so these are just a combination of um, different constraints like like uh, the ones that I mentioned and this typically can be solved by encoder and solved by an SMT solver you know, on a different logic. Uh, okay, uh, just to, I just want to uh, conclude this introductory part by just uh, noticing a few facts about the SMT. So regardless the theory that you are dealing with or the theories we are you are dealing with substantially SMT requires uh, uh, requires two capabilities the combination of two capabilities the fact of being able to deal with heavy boolean reasoning combined with the capability of reasoning in expressing the side of the first of the theories okay so substantially sat alone is not expressive enough but the stand, also standard automatic reason proof is inadequate. For instance, typically uh, first order theory proof is not good in, uh, in reason with the random name, for instance. Well, also there's something funny about, uh, um, about the SMT because uh, many of the algorithms, idea formalizations that have been used and are currently used in SMT has substantially nothing to do with logic. For instance, the main algorithm that we, we are dealing with in order in the theory, called theory because it's a logical theory of arithmetic or difference logic. Well, we're not considered for logical reason at all. So for instance, in linear arithmetic, we are using mostly the simplex. So are you all familiar with the simplex? Linear programming. Never you know what a simplex is, it. right? You, okay. I assume you are okay. So well, just to remember that uh, the simplex was conceived in the late fifties, and uh, the main uh, triggering problem uh, was uh, the one uh, the problem of finding a. Uh, the cheapest possible diets for cows. I'm serious. You say people in the, in the in America, you have uh, the the farming uh, the cow the cow you have millions of cows, right? Uh, and uh, finding uh, the good uh, the cheapest possible diet uh, which fulfills all the necessity dieting constraints like having enough uh, enough uh, carbohydrates enough fibers enough uh, uh, proteins or uh, whatever is a huge problem is a million 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 dollar problem and the simplex was conceived originally exactly for solving the diet problem and then uh, it got tons of other applications but you may find this funny but this is the story the late thing in the 58 okay so also the problem you deal with for difference logic, again, logical theory of difference logic, was conceived for uh, finding the, the minimum paths between uh, in, in graphs, okay? So not substantially very similar to the algorithm that you have in your 
your GPS uh, navigator in your, in your cell phone, okay? Again, things which, algorithms which were not conceived for doing logic at all, but now that have been imported into the, the logical field. So substantially, the main ideas we'll, which we'll see tomorrow, explain tomorrow, is uh, to combine sub-solvers with decision procedures. Sub-solvers, well, something that we know, CDCL sub-solvers, decision procedure is something which is able to solve sets, that is conjunctions, of a single atoms or literal in a given theory. So something which is not able to do any Boolean reasoning, but is knows very well how to deal the reasoning of the theory, in particular on how to deal with the functional predicates of the given theory. Okay, and uh, we will see this paradigm uh, tomorrow. Uh, so, well, and the funny thing about that is that uh, uh, SMT is not really, well, I don't say that SMT is a community, but it's a sort of, it turned out to be a merging of various communities because it was combined sub solvers from the sub community but also for the automatic reason community, from formal verification community, but also from operational research, okay, so optimization. And uh, this uh, is very hybrid community, so to say. So the goal of this, so this is just to say that the goal of this uh, second part of this course is to provide an overview of a standard lazy SMT, so which is the most the main leading uh, uh, leading uh, uh, formalism for that. So I'll give you some foundations, then some SMT solving techniques, uh, and also some uh, functionalities going beyond solving, like uh, for instance uh, incrementality, proof extraction, interpolation, uh, and sort of core extraction, and also some optimization uh, in uh, and there is a lot of ongoing research. We do not cover some related approach like eager sat encodings, which is no more a state of the art apart from, uh, or reverted braised approach, which are no more state of the art. Uh, so there were some attempts in this direction, but they were not very successful at the end. And uh, also, I we wish you to refer to some. Uh, um, surveys for an overview and uh, references. Okay, just because before, uh, uh, just as a premise, I want you to give some uh, couple of remarks before entering the, the technical details. Uh, in all my course, I will use uh, typically, unless uh, explicitly said otherwise, I will, uh, in all examples I will use, I will use linear arithmetic on rationals. The reason why I do that uh, is that uh, uh, it's for it's obvious semantics, okay? You know, I've learned, uh, we all have learned uh, arithmetic uh, in a primary school. So everybody, under, everybody understands my example, even uh, if the background of the logic is, is linear, okay? But this does not mean that we are, the fact that I always use a, a linear arithmetic example does not mean that SMT is linear arithmetic. Linear arithmetic is one of the many theories, okay? I use it just because it seems to be, it's obvious, it's, uh, uh, everybody understands it from my examples, okay? So don't be misled by the fact that I always use linear integer arithmetic as example. The second remark uh, is <laughs> this is, a funny situation which raised in, uh, in SMT due to the fact that SMT, as I said, is a hybrid community with people coming from different communities and uh, very often using a very different terminology. Okay, and when uh, terminology is not only different, but uh, gives completely different meaning to the same words, this can arise some problems, okay? So depending whether you are, uh, a strong logicist or not. So if you look, if you have a strong background in logic or not, if you come from the automatic reasoning or logical reasoning, uh, or from a constraint programming, uh, automatic reasoning, uh, you may define the very th same thing in different ways. Okay, 
Consider, for instance, this formula here. This is an NRA formula, okay? My question is, how do you call A1, A2? Do you call them propositional Boolean variables? Do you call them uninterpreted zero array predicates? Do you can call them atoms? Okay. Do you call them proposition, constant proposition, variable propositions? Well, but much more, much worse. How do you call the excess here? Do you call them domain variables or do you call them constants? So uninterpreted is called a constant or zero array uninterpreted functions. Okay, so guys, about you, how many use uh, A terminology? Me. Me. Okay, so raise a hand, please. How many use A terminology? Okay, guys, raise a hand and may mean also switch on your, your, uh, switch on your camera, right? So otherwise I cannot see you. Okay. Okay, so please raise a hand. My camera doesn't work today, so. Okay, okay. You, are, me. you are forgiven. Thanks. So how many of you uh, use B? Maybe just for variables because uh, they are uh, existentially quantified, right? That's excellent. The point, Implicitly. Right? So who is speaking? So I would. Who is speaking? Sorry. I would. Uh, Gianluca Redondi. Sorry. Uh, Gianluca. Okay. So please. Go, sorry, I don't find you, sir. Do you look around? Yeah, please go on. Yes, no, I just want to say that maybe since in logic, usually I come from mathematics and usually variables are ex okay. uh, universally quantified. That's exactly the point, right? So if you ask mathematicians or logicians, so the, if you are saying, so who is right? all are right and all are wrong in the sense that if you are a mathematician you will probably use the notation b okay so you are logicist if i ask uh, for to baratella for instance i'm pretty sure he will say b right uh if you are a person strongly deep in uh, uh, automata reasoning blah blah they will use b okay if you are a person, typical computer science coming from uh, uh, constraint programming or uh, uh, operational research or even SATA, you use notation A. Okay. I tell you something really funny, which occurred me years ago. Uh, I was in a conference, uh, in a SAT conference, and uh, they invited the person in SMT in uh, um, who gave a talk, uh, he was a person in SMT who gave a talk there. And uh, one, and he was very well known, Robert Nivenau, so he's a very well known person in SMT. And uh, he, uh, there was an, another very well known person in SAT who started really, uh, really harshly debating with him, saying that he, what he was saying, it, it was nonsense. And those two guys went on discussing heavily for quite 10 minutes. Okay, and they were really tough on that. So really they could not understand each other. And then I rose a hand and say, look guys, uh, you are saying the very same thing. The very, the very point is that Robert Nivenaus is calling access, uh, is a logician, comes from the automata reasoning community and calls the access constant, whereas uh, Karim Sakala, who was this very famous person in SAT, came from uh, a SAT community and uh, for uh, logic, uh, for me, sorry, from um, a SAT and uh, I say a hardware community and calls these variables. And so when Robert Nivenaus was uh, speaking of constants, uh, uh, Sakala interpreted constant and those values. 
whereas Nivenas was intending these symbols. Okay, and that's why they were not able to understand each other. Okay, so just be warned about that. When you speak SMT and read the SMT paper, just check what they are using. <laughs> Look at the background session and then check which notation they are using. Okay, so uh, I will use a notation A, well, which seems compliant to what uh, typically most uh, most students uh, understand, uh, including you. But uh, uh, so if there is any logical purist, uh, please uh, forgive me. Okay, in the audience. Uh, Please forgive me for, for that, okay? Okay, guys, I think that's all for today. If uh, we don't, so today we just gave some chats and just introduction and the motivation, motivational problems and tomorrow we start re really discussing about SMT. Okay? okay? Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a nice day. Do you have a question? Sorry? Do you have a question? No, 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 I was just greeting. Okay. Have a nice day. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, Enrico, can you keep... So, sorry, Roberto, I have, a, I have a... Sorry? Enrico? Yes? Can you stay online or do can you... Can you hear me? Sorry? Enrico? Non ti sento. Yeah, yeah. Okay, stay online. All, all the other can go, please. Hi. Bye, Bye everyone. Uh, uh, I meant to ask a question.